Rwanda has commenced a solemn 100-day period of remembrance, marking three decades since the genocide that claimed about a million lives of mostly Tutsi and some Madre Hutus in 1994. In a commemoration ceremony in Kigali over the weekend, President Paul Kagame called for global solidarity in confronting the ongoing challenges of genocide denial and ethnic populism. Senenu Toro reports from Kigali, Rwanda. Rwandan President Paul Kagame on Sunday lit a flame of remembrance in the capital, Kigali, to mark 30 years since the genocide that took the lives of nearly a million people. The flame of remembrance will burn for the next 100 days, the number of days that the genocide lasted in 1994. Kagame was joined by several past and current global leaders, including former U.S. President Bill Clinton and Israeli President Isaac Herzog, in laying wreaths in honor of the victims of the mass killings. In remarks, President Kagame thanked the survivors of the genocide for their efforts toward national unity. We asked you to do the impossible by carrying the burden of reconciliation on your shoulders, and you continue to do so, continue to do the impossible for our nation every single day, and we thank you. During the 100-day period in 1994, Rwanda's Hutu majority killed more than 800,000 Tutsis and Hutu moderates. The genocide in Rwanda was sparked by hate speech, mostly over the radio, by Hutu extremists against Tutsis. African Union Commission Chairperson Musa Faki Mahamat also commended the survivors and Rwanda's approach towards justice and reconciliation, encouraging Rwandans to look forward together in unity. Visitor Anemu. Let's use this opportunity to revisit the journey that you have walked. I am talking about the reconciliation of hearts and spirits and consciences. Kagame used the opportunity to caution against the increasing involvement of some African countries in tribal politics and potential resurgence of ethnic cleansing. Wanda's tragedy is a warning. The process of division and extremism, which leads to genocide, can happen anywhere if left Unchecked. Rwandans will remember their lost families, marking the period with wreath laying, vigils, and peace walks. The period is called Kwibuka, which means to remember. Sena Nutod, VOA, Kigali, Rwanda. Kenyan doctors have again rejected the government's latest offer to end a nearly month-long strike to demand better pay and improve working conditions. President William Ruto appealed to the doctors on Sunday to reconsider their demand for pay raises because, according to him, the government cannot spend money that it does not have. Dr. Simon Chigundu is uh, president of the Kenya Medical Association. He tells me that the strike will continue until the government completely addresses all of their concerns. We have immediately rejected. First, even the pronunciation itself is almost illegal because uh, according to the collective bargaining agreement, which is a legal document, medical officer interns are captured in the collective bargaining agreement that has been filed in court. And um, legally, you cannot reduce the pay of someone. So basically, the interns have been absorbed previously into a civil service job group L, so to speak, and they earn a certain amount of income. So for the president to declare that now they'll be taking a stipend first, medical interns are actually employees despite them being under supervision. So they cannot be under the stipend. So already the pronunciation itself is not necessarily legal, and this uh, the union can challenge in court if they proceed to implement that. The second one is that the medical officer interns have been advised not to pick the letters that state there is a stipend because, uh, first of all, that is an affront to the medical profession. What I see is that the president empathizes with your cause, but uh, he is saying that the country is not prepared to spend money that it doesn't have, and the government is offering 70,000 shillings a month for stipends. Isn't that understandable? It is not. It is not because, one, the budget for renovations of the state houses can pay medical interns for one year. 
the budget for the expenditure of the vice president can pay medical interns for half a year. If we do not agree that the doctor is the one to take a pay cut for the rest of the country, why can't a pay cut be done for everyone? And anyway, I don't think it will even be a discussion because the collective bargaining agreement does not allow salaries to be revised downward. And this would constitute a very simple legal case that the government would lose. Are you trying to equate the uh, renovation to that of the salaries of the intern? Are you saying that the government should not renovate? Yes, that is not a priority. Training of medical interns is a priority. Renovations can wait. Outgoing East African Community Secretary General Peter Mathuki could leave office sooner than the maximum six months after a recall. This is after the bloc signaled for heads of state summit for April 15th. In a letter dated March 28th and addressed to EEC Council of Ministers, the chairperson South Sudanese EEC Affairs Minister Deng Arwal Kol said they will convene virtually on March before the summit decides on Mathuki's fate on the same day. The summit, the East African community highest decision making body, will then be expected to swear in Caroline Mwende Meke as the seventh Secretary General. Mrs. Meke will become the third Kenyan to hold the post after Francis Mutharua, who served from 1996 to 2001 and Mathuki 2021 to 2024. Honorable Cole said, I hereby notify you that President Isao Kiel has requested the heads of states to hold an extraordinary summit virtually on 15th April 2024 to be preceded by the EAC Council of Ministers session virtually on the same day to consider the appointment of Mrs. Karin Mwende as the Secretary General of the EAC Honorable Call. Once she is sworn in, the summit will propose the date when she assumes office. A move that will bring to an end the three-year period that Dr. Mathuki has been as the helm of the regional bloc. Mrs. Meke is currently the regional coordination advisor in the management and coordination unit of the UN regional directors team for Eastern and Southern Africa based in Johannesburg. Dr. Mathuki, on the other hand, is scheduled for vetting before Kenya's parliament on April 8th, even though he is yet to officially resign from his post, a move that is causing confusion within the EEC secretariat. Essentially, only he, he can decide if he wants to go for vetting for the ambassadorial role and there is no law barring a service secretary general from attending to some other job interview. When President William Ruto nominated him last month, he indicated he had recalled him from the EEC and Dr. Mathuki hasn't conducted any public business for the East African community since. Mr. Cole said that the decision to convene the summit meeting was necessitated by President William Ruto's request to recall Dr. Mathuki from the office of the EAC Secretary General and subsequently his appointment as Kenya's envoy to Moscow. On March 18, 2024, I received a letter from Kenya giving notice of the withdrawal of Dr. Mathuki as the Secretary General of the EEC upon his nomination as Ambassador to Moscow, wrote Call. The letter to the Council of Ministers recalling Mathuki was last month sent to all ministers in charge of the bloc's affairs through Kenya's EEC Cabinet Secretary Penina Malonzar. 